classical instruments seem to have. I can't pass a window of guitars now without going across the road to look at them. It's the same impulse from when I was a kid, a little kid. And I feel very fortunate to be able to pick an instrument up and play because I remember taking a guitar down. I, my heart was in my mouth. I took a Spanish guitar down from after looking at it for ages in the shop and I just couldn't resist it anymore. And as I was taking it down, the guy behind the counter said, drop that and I'll drop you. So I, I still regard myself as very lucky to, uh, to be able to pick up an instrument and play it, just play it. It's, it's a real fascination with the instrument. I used to, when kids were, would make electric guitars in the woodwork room at school, I used to go just go down there and just so that I could possibly touch them, you know, the, not the boys, the guitars. And, uh, and I was just fascinated by the whole shape of the guitar, you know, the whole the whole thing, the whole, my, 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 and because of the Fender Stratocaster, which was uh, the, the ultimate object of desire for me at the time when I was, when I was a little kid, my first guitar had to be like that, and it was uh, a copy, a very poor copy of one of those things. Trying to keep those child, childhood things alive. It seems to go on with me, but I, I think it's quite important. If you like motorcycles, then you like motorcycles. You've liked them since you were a little kid. And so that's always, and, and those objects that you were attracted to as a, as a child, I think that it's important to keep that, some of that stuff alive because it keeps you young. <laughs> Cleaning My Gun is, is, is really um, one of those songs about a fairly grizzled survivor, but I suppose that's about the stage where me and the guys that I play music with are we're probably at, although it's not ostensibly, it's not, it's not about me or us. It's a way of looking at the world that you arrive at. I, I uh, enjoy playing music like that because I get a chance to play loud and get a chance to to um, blow off some steam with a Gibson Les Paul. Playing rock and roll is really what I always wanted to do. That's, you know, that's always never too far away. And, um, you know, if, I, if I'm going to play something like that, I mean, it might send the folk musicians off to have a drink while the real men get on and play their rock and roll. I might do that, I don't know. I mean, it just depends on whatever anybody else has got going that can add to the song. With Piper to the End, which was actually written for uh, my Uncle Freddie, who was a piper in the, in the Black Watch, uh, uh, who uh, died in the Second World War, um, uh, and one of the uncles I never met, um, and a lot of people never met their, their uncles because of that war. I resisted the temptation to actually use Highland pipes. In fact, there are no pipes, no Yulian pipes or Highland pipes on that. And I thought it would just be too obvious somehow. But I can hear Highland pipes doing it, and I suppose at some point uh, a Highland piper or a Highland pipe outfit will take it on. They may have to change the key or whatever they'll do, and now no doubt they'll improve it. But I, I just didn't feel that that's what I wanted to do with it. When I leave this world... Touring is brilliant from the point of view of being able to assess the world different countries because you're away for a couple of years of two or three years and you come back and you can gauge a change pretty quickly you can you can go to well say you can go to Australia in the 80s well you can go back 10 years later seven years later and you can really feel the difference and see it and you can almost put your finger on what it is and so that's been a, 
a useful thing to do. And you, you develop more of a world view of things. You start to feel, you feel affection for different countries and different people, different places. It broadens your view quite a bit, all of that traveling. The great thing about touring with a band, I think, is that it's a shared experience all the time, that you're going through this landscape, changing all the time, and you've got this shared view of it. And, of course, uh, the sense of humor is very, very important, so that so you're getting a often a humorous view of the world as well, and uh, it's something that suits me. It doesn't, ne doesn't necessarily suit everyone. A lot of people would rather travel by themselves and reflect and do all that. You know, I, I like traveling with a, with a bunch of people. I think that playing your songs to an audience is enervating and it's, it's life-affirming and it's all sorts of good things. They're there to celebrate something and they're going to have a good time. I enjoy playing the old songs, I enjoy playing the Dire Straits songs, I enjoy playing the songs that I, I wrote that have become milestones for people. That feeling when everybody's singing or something like that is great because it's an affirmation again that you, this, this thing that you felt when you realized that you were a songwriter, uh, wasn't, it wasn't kidding you. It was that there is this thing, and that, that's how I can know now if I see a song, I'm still slightly amazed by it, that I, that I can see this song, and it's just, it's come. Somehow it's come, and somehow it's arrived, and I, it amazes me somehow to think that in however long, maybe in two years or four years, or when, when I eventually manage to get it recorded, and that it will be out there. This, here it is now, but it will be out there in some form. And, you know, you'll hear somebody whistling it. The chisels are calling It's time to make sawdust there is a track on the, on the record called Monteleone, which is about John Monteleone, who is probably the finest builder of the archtop guitar in the world today. And while he was building the guitar, occasionally he'd send me an email, just a little note about how the build was going of different things. And there would diff be little things that he would say gave me the inspiration to write the song about him. I actually played the, 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 the Monteleone on the Monteleone track and we recorded the um, song here in British Grove with the, and it was great to hear the strings uh, on, on the song and the studio sounds so beautiful with strings for strings. You can't beat the house You can't this is British Grove Studios, yeah. It's something I wish I'd done a long time ago. But we had a good time recording, yeah. Every album I take on now, I seem to enjoy more and more. British Grove has been open long enough now for uh, us to know what we're doing in it, I hope. And each album, each project that we do gets, seems to get more enjoyable. The coffee machine still works, so everything's fine. You win some, you might get lucky now and Yeah, you win some. I'm just a thiever, stealing time in the border.